Okay, investment decision rules, uh, corporate finance, GSF 2106, FSA Laval. Uh, I've been doing these, uh, I've been preparing these slides uh, to like, better tackle the, uh, the concepts of this chapter that uh, we are uh, using in the, uh, that are being used in the questions I've asked on the, uh, the questionnaire on chapter 8 of the textbook. So we focused the presentation on net present value, internal rate of return, when the two measures lead to different decisions, and how can we expect when we have regular cash flows ver versus irregular cash flows in terms of NPV and the um, uh, internal rate of return. So the net present value is defined as the present value of cash inflows minus the present value of cash outflows. A typical project is a project that we will um, uh, define as having regular cash flows, is a, is a project where you have uh, cash outflows at the beginning and cash inflows at the end. So when you buy a stock, you pay at time zero and you receive dividends and the future price at a later date. When you buy a bond, you pay the bond today and you, rece you receive uh, your coupon payments and the face value uh, at a later date. If we're talking about a, a company, like the company um, pays the initial investment first to uh, build a plant or start a new project and it collects uh, the cash flows or profits at a later date. So these are projects with regular cash flows. So here's an, here is an example of a project with regular cash flow. So there's an initial investment at time zero and five cash flows C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 at time one, two, three, four, five. So the net present value of this project is minus initial investment at time zero, discounted value of the first cash flow over one period at the appropriate discount rate, discounted present value of the second cash flow discounted at the appropriate uh, discount rate over two periods, C3 discounted over three periods, C4 and C5 discounted over four and five periods. So what is the, so let's look at the, the net present value of this project when the interest rate is zero and when the interest rate is equal to infinity. So, so when the, inter, the interest rate is equal to zero, the net present value of the project is equal to the sum of all its cash flows. If the, um, if the cash flows are the same, uh, in each period, the, the net present value when the interest rate is zero is minus the initial investment plus five times uh, the, the cash flow to be received every period. With regular cash flows, NPV is positive uh, with a discount rate of zero when the sum of all cash flows is positive. If it were not the case with regular cash flows, there would be no point in undertaking the project because uh, the project would never, if the sum of the cash flows are negative, the initial investment is never re recovered. So with cash flows, uh, with, uh, with regular cash flows, if we have a negative NPV uh, with a discount rate equal to zero, well, the, the, the project never has a positive NPV for any positive discount rate. So there is no point in undertaking the project. When the interest rate, when the discount rate goes to zero, the present value of all future cash flows is equal to zero. And the net present value of the project is equal to minus the initial investment. So here's a graph. Of, of the net present value of a project for different discount rates when the project presents what we call regular cash flows. 
So the NPV when the interest rate is zero is equal to the sum of all the cash flows. The NPV when the interest rate goes to infinity is minus the initial investment. And with regular cash flows, there can only be one discount rate that gives a net present value equal to zero. And the discount rate that gives a net present value equal to zero is referred to as the internal rate of return. So here's an example of a, a project where you never make any money. So if, if the net present value at the rate of zero is smaller than zero, uh, there's no point in undertaking the project. The project will never have a net present value greater than zero. Example, a project requires an investment of $5,500 today and promises a cash inflow of $2,200 at the end of the next 10 years. What is the net present value of this project if the appropriate cost of capital is 23%? So the net present value, so initial investment of $5,500, regular cash flows of $2,200 over 10 years, discounted at 23%, gives a net present value of $2,858. Question about the in internal rate of return with regular cash flows. A project requires an investment of $4,700 today and promises a cash inflow of $1,500 at the end of the next uh, 10 years. What is approximately the internal rate of return of this project? So the choices give you like very, very small intervals and you have to find the correct answer. So how will that work? So first, we can check that the net present value of this project when the interest rate is zero is larger than zero. So if the net present value at an interest rate of, ze of zero is smaller than zero, then th there's, no, there's no discount rate with an NPV equal to zero because the NPV is never equal to zero. Then we can verify uh, easily that the net present value with an infinite discount rate is smaller than zero, which means that we have regular cash flows and that the project has a unique, there, there exists a unique discount rate R hat such that the net present value at this discount rate is equal to zero. So to find the correct answer among the choices offered, we need to compute the net present value at the different discount rates uh, presented and choose the answer that, that gives us a net present value as close as possible to, uh, to zero. So we know that around the internal rate of return if we take uh, an, in, um, an, an interest rate smaller than the internal rate of return the net present value obtained will be positive and when we select a, a, a discount rate larger than the internal rate of return then the net present value is negative so each of the choices uh, propo proposed uh, present two interest rates R1 and R2 so the correct answer will be such that the net present value with the smaller rate will be positive and the net present value with the larger rate will be negative so let's try them so if we compute the NPV with the discount rates of choice A here's what we obtain so choice A is 23.6, 23.7. So if we go back, so choice A, 23.6, 23.7. So let's try, if we try 23.6 and 23.7, so here the discount rate U, so nothing changes 
with respect to the initial investment. Nothing changes with respect to the, uh, the cash flow every year. Nothing changes with respect to the number of years. What changes is the discount rate being used in each calculation. So with 23.6%, we have an NPV of 892, and with 23.7%, uh, we have 874. So there is no change in sign. So both NPVs are positive. Since both NPVs are positive, this cannot be the correct answer. If we compute net present value with 32.5 and 32.6, we obtain two negative values. Since we obtain two negative values, so both of these rates are larger than the internal rate of return. So this cannot be the correct answer. If we try 29.5 and 29.6, the NPV at 29.5 is positive. The NPV at 29.6 is negative. So the correct answer is the uh, internal rate of return of this project lies between 1.4%, uh, uh, 29.5% and 29.6%. So the correct answer is C. The IRR is between 29.5% and 29.6%. Now, projects with irregular cash cash flows. 